uh, Ron DeSantis and Greg Abbott, this, uh, this is troubling, shall we say, to say the very least. Um, the, the headline of my daily rant today over at Hartman Report, DeSantis and Abbott, will they be held responsible for mass dying of adults and children? Right now, we're seeing hospitals filling up across Florida, across Texas, and across all the states in between. And the pillars basically holding up either side of the South here, this uh, anti-democratic, anti-Biden, uh, pro-Trump, pro-death uh, South, are Texas and Florida, DeSantis, uh, or Florida and Texas, DeSantis and, and, and Abbott, respectively. And I'm hypothesizing here that they've gone all in on a high-stakes bet. And the example of Donald Trump indicates that they may well win it. And that's my, quest my main question to you today is, will they win this bet? Uh, by the way, on the on the op-ed over at Hartman Report, uh, we've uh, enabled comments at the at the very bottom of the article. Where, uh, if you're a, a full subscriber to the to Hartman Report, you can comment. It, it it keeps out you know the upside is it keeps out trolls and spammers, um, you know, because it's only subscribers. So uh, and I'm checking it every half hour or so, and I'm I've replied to a couple of people's comments already. But here's the question. You know, are they going to get away with this, killing thousands of their own citizens, tens of thousands of their own citizens, and the childrens of those citizens? Killing, perhaps, too strong a word. Let's say letting die. But it's not just benign neglect. I mean, they're actually taking forceful, using the force of law, using police with guns, using the power of the law to say to teachers and school administrators and parents, you will not have a safe environment in your schools. And the reason why? Because we're all following Donald Trump and his anti-mask thing that he started back in 2020 because he was afraid that if people wore masks and social distanced and stayed home, the economy would go soft and he'd lose the election. I mean, let's keep in mind where this all began, right? But this is their bet that, you know, Donald Trump... Had he, uh, according to this study from Brookings, there was another study from The Lancet, the British Medical Journal. Uh, Deborah Burks laid this out on national television. I've got a hot link to that in my article at Harbin Report. Um, she just, you know, she just says it out loud. 400,000 Americans would not be dead if Donald Trump had simply done what, for example, Trudeau did in Canada. Everybody has to wear a mask. Everybody has to social distance. If he had just done that, 400,000 dead Americans. But you look around at the Republican Party, is anybody blaming Trump for their dead relatives? Apparently not. And this is the bet that DeSantis and, and Abbott are making right now, is they're saying, you know, we're going to let a whole bunch of, we're going to cause a whole bunch of people to die. And including children, by the way. The Delta variant doesn't seem to discriminate. It's no longer the boomer remover. It's now killing everybody and sickening everybody. And the bet that they're making in Florida and Texas, and, and you know, and then you've got the sheeple govern, you know, governors all in between, with the exception of John Bell Edwards in Louisiana, who's a Democrat, all these other governors. The, the bet that they're making is that the COVID pandemic or epidemic in, in those southern states is going to play out the way that diseases typically do. We, you know, and that is that you know, the disease comes in, it's new, it whacks a bunch of people, so you have a spike in, in sickness and deaths, and then it spreads so far and wide that people either die or they become immune as a consequence of having had the disease and the slope of the infection starts going back down again. We saw this with the bubonic plague in Europe. It came in waves. We saw this with, you know, also known as the Black Death. Um, we, saw this, we saw this with the flu in 1918. We see it with the flu every year in America. When we were kids, when I was a kid anyway, we saw it with chickenpox, mumps, and measles. This is, you know, before the vaccines. 
We saw it in the era of George Washington with smallpox. It comes in waves. Hell, Edgar Allan Poe, there was a typhoid epidemic going on in New York City. He fled to northern New York, and he came back two years later when it had passed. So DeSantis and Abbott are figuring, okay, eventually enough people are going to get sick in our states. They've got, you know, some, something like 30 million people in, 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 um, in those two states that have already been infected. We're going to get enough people infected that we will achieve herd immunity, and the numbers will start going back down again, and we can claim victory. And by the way, people will forget that we had anything to do with this death and disease. And, and they've got several examples of Republicans who have pulled this off in the past. George W. Bush, we were talking yesterday with Spencer Ackerman about his book, uh, Reign of Terror, about after, you know, after 9-11. And he said, you know, George Bush, George W. Bush, after 9-11, the Taliban, Mullah Omar, the head of the Taliban in Afghanistan, said, we will arrest Osama bin Laden and hand him over to you. And Bush said, oh, no, I'd rather have a war. That's going to get me reelected in 2004, being a wartime president. And he started bombing the poorest country on Earth, well, the second poorest country behind Burkina Faso, uh, the second poorest country on Earth with an average annual income of $700 a year. That's how poor Afghanistan was. Bomb them back to the Stone Age? No, they were already there. And then he lied us, you know, the next year, he lied us into a war in Iraq. And our people sitting around going, hey, you know, George W. Bush, he killed over a million people in the Middle East and killed thousands and thousands of American soldiers. We should think poorly of him. No, the Republicans love George W. Bush. So it's not like there isn't precedent for Republicans getting away with this. Now, Democrats, not so much. Right? People, people, you know, LBJ lied us into the Vietnam War. <laughs> we all know that, and, and we hate him for that, or at least that part of him. I mean, he did great stuff with a great society, but the Vietnam War, that was, a, that was a war crime. And how do we know? Because the Vietnam Memorial. It's got those 50-some-odd thousand names etched into it. You walk by that memorial in Washington, D.C., and it's a gut punch. I've been there a couple of times. It's an, ab I have friends on that wall. It's an absolute gut punch. I guarantee you, there will be no such memorial with the names of the people that just like right in your face to the 600,000 people who have died in the United States, 400,000 of them at least as the direct result of Donald Trump's, I was gonna say incompetence, I would say malice. So, you know, Republicans have a long history of getting away with this kind of thing, with killing Americans or, you know, taking, lying to us and, and you know, being incompetent and killing Americans and just, you know, dancing away. Trump's followers still love Trump. They're not sitting around going, oh, you know, my friend Ralph died of this thing. He didn't have to die. No, they, don't, they probably don't even know it because they live in such a, a well-insulated media bubble. And now it's hitting kids. The uh, Agence France Press reporting from Philadelphia about a, a child, 10-year-old child. His symptoms were debilitating, pain in his legs so bad he couldn't walk anymore, gastrointestinal distress and nausea so severe he had to lie in bed, unable, unable to navigate the stairs. This is a healthy 10-year-old. Unable to navigate stairs, he crawled instead. When he got well enough to go to school months later, at school, basic math equations and completing homework assignments became enormously challenging for the usually A student. He describes it as a kind of confusion because he couldn't grasp basic things that he'd normally find easy to deal with. This is called long COVID. It's hitting our children with this Delta variant. The National Institutes of Health on their website at NIH.gov, quote, Almost half of children who contract COVID-19 may have lasting symptoms which should factor into decisions on reopening schools. Evidence from the first study of long COVID in children suggests that more than half of children aged between 6 and 16 years old who contract the virus have at least one symptom lasting more than 120 days, with 42.6% impaired by these systems, symptoms during ongoing daily activities. Meanwhile, Carrie Elleveld over at uh, Daily Kos writes, 
What can protect these children, however, is universal in-school masking for students and staff. It's been studied by Duke University researchers who tracked COVID-19 transmission in North Carolina K-12 schools across 100 school districts, 14 charter schools, 160,549 school staffers, and more than 864,000 students attending in-school instruction. Dr. Kinesia Zimmerman said, we've learned a few things for certain. This is an associate professor of pediatrics at Duke, Duke School of Medicine. Although vaccination is the best way to prevent COVID-19, universal masking is a close second. And with masking in place, in-school learning is safe and more effective than remote instruction, regardless of community rates of infection. But what do the headlines say? Well, down in Florida, the New York Post, COVID-19 cases among kids overwhelm Florida hospitals. The Daytona Beach News Journal, Florida sets COVID hospitalization records again, including highest in nation for children. In Texas, Channel 5, Dallas, full on surge. Tarrant County leaders worry about children's health hospital capacity. CNN, baby girl with COVID-19 airlifted 150 miles because of Houston hospital bed shortage. So my question, are DeSantis and Abbott gonna be able to get away with this? DeSantis just this morning doubled down. I'm going to defy President Biden. Really? You know, I would never bet that a Republican can't get away with mass killing.